Hello, welcome to the Flow Nerds podcast. Today I'm here with Melissa Hutchison. Hi, Melissa. Thank you for being here. Hi, I'm I'm most honored to be here. We've yeah. been you and I have been communicating for a while. I feel like we've been yes. trying to a few months is it also? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just blame my slow pace and my procrastination <laughs> on the pandemic yes anything that goes slow Sad. or awry i'm like oh it's the pandemic yeah Not- well at least you're finally here and it's great to obviously have you on so thank you, thank you. um so i just wanted a quick sum up of how you actually got into the voice acting slash acting world Oh, wow. Well, honestly, I mean, uh, if we take it all the way back, it's uh, just even as a little kid, I was always really, I mean, not that there, I don't know any children that don't love cartoons, but I was, uh, I had a different relationship with it. I was attached to uh, trying to mimic the voices I was hearing and create my own characters with my stuffed animals and just in my life in general. Yeah. And uh, from a very young age, I always wanted to be an actor cool. uh, or a race car driver. <laughs> oh, okay. Marion. Uh, one required way too much school, race car driver. I don't know. That just kind of fell off. Um, <laughs> but I, I always wanted to be an actor. And yeah. I was pretty proactive about that. Even I think when I was 10 years old, I, I went to my first audition for, uh, it was A Christmas Carol. Oh, actually. nice. And I got a role in this community theater play and uh, that really just lit the fire of me wanting to actively be an actor. Uh, But it was, you know, it's kind of a long story, but uh, you know, I did theater all throughout um, school and at at a younger age and then kind of took some time off in my early twenties to do what young people do. And that's just, you know, whatever, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the things that young people do that, you know, fun stuff. Um, <laughs> and uh, I uh, had a friend uh, who was doing commercial, uh, uh, like commercial spots, voiceover work for commercials. Yeah. And, stuff. and I was like, at that point, I was in my early to mid 20s. And I was just like, what am I doing? I need to get back into acting. And I was really um, uh, inspired yeah by what she was doing and I was like I've always loved animation I mean it's always been something I've I've wanted to do I just for some reason always saw myself as a theater or on camera actor oh okay oh my god voiceover what the hell am I doing uh so I started to pursue it uh there was some luck involved as far as uh you know I, I went to high school with still one of my very closest friends but he's also my agent in San Francisco and oh cool you know, I I went in to chat with him about seeing what I could do to, to yeah. get into this amazing world. And uh, that got the ball uh, spinning and, um, or rolling rather. And um, it's kind of a, you know, it's been, oh Lord, I don't want to say how many years because it just makes me feel ancient, but I've been, you know, been a while, doing yeah. voiceover for like 20, yeah, it's like 20 years at this point. I don't even know. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, but I'm very, very grateful. Crazy, but also I'm I'm so very grateful to uh, to do what I do for a living. Because yeah. honestly, the race car driver thing didn't work out, <laughs> and I don't know what I'd be doing otherwise. I just yeah. I love it. So awesome. Uh, yeah. So what attracted you to the role of the biggest role I know you for, Clementine? Well, you know, honestly. Uh, it's it's interesting because in I mean I can't think of what year it was I'd have to like Google it uh, Telltale Games yeah uh, I did uh, a few uh, games with them before they before they got The Walking Dead um, yeah you did Sam and Max didn't you yeah so Sam yeah. and Max yeah. was my first roles Stinky. oh cool her name was Stinky or oh, is wow. um, girl Stinky rather yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when the auditions would come through uh, for Telltale Games, yeah, um, it was just so unique because it read like a play. It read like an animated series. Like it oh, was dialogue. Yeah. It was character driven. It was story driven. And as an actor, I mean, and and at that point back in the day, most video games were just like you say a few lines and then you have about yeah. thirty different ways you die. <laughs> yeah. But it's like there's no like true uh, interaction 
uh, interaction yeah, and yeah. really getting into the depth of a character. So when Sam and Max came around, uh, I remember auditioning for, I think Stinky doesn't come into like season two. Oh, sorry if I'm wrong. Okay. Um, I just remember seeing the auditions for this and just being like, oh man, I really want to work for this game company because yeah. they are doing something that is like super cool. It reminded me of the um, like choose your own adventure books that yeah. I used to read as a kid. Yeah. Uh, so I booked that role. Um, all of this goes through my agency, of course, you know, I, yeah, yeah. I um, let's see after that, it was, uh, uh, Nelson Tether's pencil agent. Then there was back to the future. Oh yeah. Uh, I feel like I'm totally missing one right now and I feel really horrible. Uh, I blame it on the pandemic. It's my brain. It's the pandemic. I don't You're know. You're in Minecraft, weren't you? Yeah, so that, but that was after, yo, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, after Walking Dead, yeah, there was The Wolf Among Us. Yeah, of um, course, yeah. But uh, when, when, did I already say Back to the Future? I think I yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so when the auditions for The Walking Dead came around, uh, you know, we got all the sides and the character description yeah. and then just the simple, um, you know, the, the original artwork that yeah. goes with character oh cool and i uh i read for most of the the female characters actually except for katya because they were like dutch accent i'm like Ugh. oh this okay is, i'm gonna sound like austin powers and gold member if i try <laughs> to do dutch i'm from holland isn't that weird it would just be dumb so i did not read for katya <laughs> oh Jones okay that and she's she nailed it yeah um but you know just something about seeing the artwork for for little Clementine yeah. and the description for her, uh, just something really like hit home with me. Um, and it's interesting because I do a lot of kid voices, but more boy oh. voices. Yeah. And girl voices I do, but they tend to be more cartoony and like, you know, just like really yeah. to do a really authentic girl kid voice is, um, it's trickier, but right. I just found this place uh, with her and I should probably mention that I was already a fan I hadn't read the comics yet, uh, yeah. yet. I was aware of the series and I'd already seen the first season of the show so I was like oh shit like this this oh, is like yeah. this show is so good I was totally sucked into it um so when I read for her I just it, it's funny because it, it it wasn't that simple it wasn't like I sent in my audition and they were like oh my god and, yeah I actually went through like three rounds at least of callback. Oh, wow. Yeah, they were, they were, it had to be so authentic because right. they were taking a big risk. Um, I mean, obviously Lee in season one is your main character, but yeah. they're making a game where your whole goal is to protect a kid and yeah. kids, if they're not well written or well done, yeah. can be annoying. <laughs> oh, I well, know. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, yeah. So they had to, you know, have this, this build this relationship between uh, these characters that was so yeah. dynamic. Um, so I think ultimately, uh, I just really was able to hone in on, on her strengths as a child and her sensitivities. Um, and I found this voice, sorry, I'm not like this. I just found this voice and it really kind of I just did things that like kids kind of talk in different ways and they breathe in different ways and stutter and I don't know. I mean, just like this kind of like. That is crazy how you can transition from that to, it's so cool. It's <laughs> I get it's all those cartoons. Um, I've spent so much time with Clementine. Um, it's, it's really, uh, to be able, I'm so locked into her character. Yeah. Like I can bust into like, season one two three four like <laughs> <laughs> how did you um find sorry how did you age her with your voice well you know honestly the the trickiest part of aging her voice was when they had um decided to do season two and have her be the playable character yeah, of course, and yeah. only a couple years maybe a year and a half had gone by in the time in the time uh, frame from yeah, season yeah, yeah, yeah. So it couldn't be this crazy sub, you know, like, you know, go from like this to, hey, I'm Clem, you know what I mean? It's, it's really stupid. <laughs> yeah. You know, but they were like, at this point though, she's been through so much. Um, 
And so she is, you know, still young and innocent. Of course, yeah. But she has the mentality of like an already like, you know, hardened 16 year old. Yeah. Um, the sassy Clem that we all get to know and love is was born in season two, basically. Yeah. Um, you know, honestly, that was the only time that it was difficult for me to uh, progress with her age. Oh, okay. Because, yeah. Because it had to go from something that was so sweet to something that was a little bit more, you know, just had oh. just more of an edge and oh, not, okay. as, yeah. you know, uh, and it was just such a minor tweak. Yeah. Uh, but I remember being so freaking stressed out about that. I, yeah, it, I can imagine. It was, it was weird. And well, and they were just like, we got to land on, you know, I mean, everybody at Telltale was just, you know, when the thing is, is, and, and this is something I'm extremely grateful for when so many people fall in love with a character. Yeah. And, and in a way that are like, you know, if something happens to Clementine, we're going to write it, you know, people <laughs> yeah. really, really protective of her. So the transition into season two, uh, definitely everybody was like, we cannot F this up. This has yeah. to be, this has to be perfect. So I think that, you know, uh, season basically from from season two she's about here and then you know honestly season three and season four she just was closer to my range yeah. except she has this airy quality she sounds way cooler than i do i'm like <laughs> I'm a big you, you should speak like clementine all the time then <laughs> i do all i <laughs> I do. I mean, when when the world wasn't totally what it is right now, you know, I yeah. go to a lot of conventions and oh, cool. Um, do a lot of was doing a lot of panels and yeah. do a lot of interviews and um, so yeah, the voice, uh, the beloved voice of Clem is on, in my own personal life. I don't usually throw out Clementine that often. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> fair <Yeah>. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Just walking. I mean, I could. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe one would be like that sounds really familiar uh <laughs> no, i normally just you know but it's just easy for me to morph into her because because i have spent so much time yeah. uh voicing her yeah um, do you find it hard to easy sorry to go into other voices like you know you played trixie in yeah. um, back to the future do you find it easy to go into those voices uh yeah well trixie trotter she's kind of this like go-to like you know, ditzy blonde New Yorker. Oh, yeah. That one was actually uh, also something that was pretty easy for me because <laughs> I had so much fun. And she got, I got to sing, which was so cool. She yeah. was so much fun. That was such a fun game. Um, there are, um, you know, a lot of voices I do. Uh, just depends on the project, honestly, where I, yeah. I you know, they'll have to play me a reference file because I'm like, oh, can you, I can't really remember. Yeah where we're at with this one so i'm not like you know i'm like i'm so impressive uh don't yeah. be that impressed by me trust me it's really uh you know but again with the telltale games games yeah. in particular uh because of the amount of dialogue we really just were so spoiled by the amount of time we got to spend yeah in sessions voicing these characters yeah um, i imagine so yeah so uh, you also did you know, you played Toad Jr. as well. The voice is very similar to you, young Clementine, isn't it? Is it the same voice you use? Uh, same, same tone, I'd say. I mean, uh, well, it's funny, Toad Jr. Um, I was actually in a Walking Dead session when they had me. They had booked. I think they were using an actual kid for that role, and I don't know, something wasn't working out. And they're like, "Hey, do you mind just doing this quick audition? It's for this oh, character, wow. Toad Jr." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I'll read for it." So it's not like something I had a lot of time to practice for. Yeah. And if anybody notices Toad Jr. originally actually, and I am sorry to your people and my ancestors had a British accent. So if you actually listen to- Oh, really? Early Toad Jr. But then in uh, season two or, or not, no, no, in later episodes, I can't remember when they nixed it. If you'll oh, notice the wow. subpar British accent has disappeared. Because oh. <laughs> I, I recorded these lines and I thought it was just an audition. Uh, but yeah, it is. it was basically, he's the same age as Clem. It was right. uh, just my boy version. But when they actually used those lines, I was like, you guys, I would have done that better. <laughs> you know, this was going to end up in the game. Yeah. Because, you know, his, yeah, uh, his, uh, uh, why am I forgetting? It's just Toad. Toad. His dad, he's got that. And that's played by Chuck Caracalus had oh, cool. like a real strong like cockney accent that yeah. he was yeah. doing uh so they were trying to 
whatever. I can sometimes <laughs> pull off a pretty decent British accent, but yeah, Toad, uh, Toad Jr. was definitely basically boy, boyified Clem. Uh, I, th I thought that. Yeah. What about, uh, you played Belle as well, didn't you? Uh, Beauty. Be oh, be yeah, sorry, I meant, I mean, yeah. You have yeah, to yeah. get your Disney princess uh, character right. He's worked uh, with Gavin, uh, Gavin Hammond as well, didn't you? Because he was his beast. So. Yeah, that was a lot of fun because, and, and again, at that time, we were doing Walking Dead sessions and uh, Wolf Among Us sessions. Oh, like cool. The first chunk, the first two hours of a recording session would be the Walking Dead, and the second would be the Wolf Among Us, something like that. So oh. in some of the recording session, I'm working with Gavin as Kenny. Yeah. Uh, and then in the other chunk of the recording session, we're now, you know, yes. a married, a fighting <laughs> married couple, not always fighting, but, um, yeah. so, and Gavin and I are, you know, we're, we're, he's, I just love him. He's oh, so cool. dear to me. Yeah. He's a very close person in my life. So, so it's been really cool to get to work with him. Oh, nice. Well, That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was it like when he uh, came back in season two? Two. Yeah uh of the walking dead yeah was you shocked to see his character return or did you know in advance well you know it was interesting and i'm sure he told you uh he went into some details about his possible death situations. yeah they, were, they reported um a bunch of him i mean you know it's kind of the situation where in the circumstance of how kenny uh leaves season one you're like there's no way he would be alive yeah how's he getting out of this that dude's dead so they recorded um and again he probably already told you this but he recorded a bunch of like death scenes for yeah, him yeah he did yeah um and they had it all you know on file but then they told him that they uh were i wasn't it was like the one the one damn time i missed a uh a party it was like the end of season one party or whatever they told him the writers told him that they erased oh it. yeah they didn't really erase it i'm sure it exists somewhere <laughs> we yeah, threw of course. It um that they you know basically we're gonna lose all his deaths yeah death. and uh i person on a personal level of course was so happy that they were bringing him back into uh season two yeah um because again, <laughs> we're such good friends in real life that yeah, exactly. it was, and, and honestly, you know, with season two, he was the only, except for a brief interaction with Krista and Omid, um, yeah. he was the only original uh, actor from uh, oh, season three. Yeah, of course, yeah. So I was thrilled, and my personal way that I play Clementine, I'm like team Kenny 100%. Yeah. Oh, no cool. No kill him. No judgment oh. on people who did. Sorry, spoiler alert. Should I not say that? <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> no, <I'm> joke. <joking. laughs> I mean, what? What? <laughs> it was a dream oh. sequence. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I agree. I always choose Kenny because um, I was never a big fan of Jane. But uh, again, you know. Y yeah. I mean, and it wasn't anything about the... Uh, I'm speaking right now as a fan of the game. Yeah, of, of course. Someone who uh, has any, uh, as me being a fan of playing it, I just didn't feel that uh, the relationship between uh, Clem and Jane was strong enough for me to yeah. like, you know, bail on this person that was just so important to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I don't know. But again, no judgment. That's the cool thing about what Telltale did is, um, you know, leaving these decisions and these choices in the players' hands, it was, yeah. uh, and when I get to meet so many people, like, at conventions and whatnot, who are yeah. literally, play, I, well, I played this with my best friend, or I played this with my dad, and, you know, just, it's, it's as opposed to, like, a first-person shooter, where the person is actually playing the game, I yeah. mean, and if you're sitting on the couch next to him, you might be like, whoa, nice job, dude, but otherwise, you're kind of yeah. like, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's just not as interactive. No, but, I totally get it, yeah what they did for the story driven game yeah. uh, was well huh, game changing honestly because yeah. after the walking dead came out and with its success you know then we have like the last of us and we have all of yeah. these I, I can only think of one game off the top of my head right now but we have all these other um games that are basically followed suit yeah and I, creating 
so much depth and story. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what was your opinion on the ending of season four of How the Walking Dead ended? Were you satisfied with your character, uh, the story? Yeah, well, I mean, shit, the fact that it actually got finished. Well, I, exactly, <laughs> exactly, I know. Miracle from God. Uh, no, I mean, yeah. Um, with the closure of Telltale aside. Yeah. Um, how they decided to wrap the final season the final episode yeah um yeah i thought it i thought it was great yeah. i think um it was very smart of them to leave her alive i've actually talked to some people who were like oh they should have killed her or i don't know like who were kind of expecting yeah. that her, her end her character arc would be done yeah you know, i thought it would have repeated season one if they kill her because it was a similar situation to leave on it in a way so yeah i mean in that i suppose would be truly full circle but, yeah. um, you know, there was just so much going on in that, uh, again, before what happened with Telltale Games and then Skybound uh, taking over, Yeah, um, I was uh, very happy with, with what they decided to do. And it's, I actually, and I did this through all the seasons, um, I tried to keep my knowledge of the end of the game a mystery oh okay <laughs> we would record each episode pretty close to when they were going to get released and for me as a fan of the game and as the actor i really yeah. did you know it's not like we went in on day one and then was here's what's going to happen through the entire series and then here's how it's going to end like yeah. i did not know until basically we were going in to record the final episode oh the cool ultimate outcome so oh. i guess i should also say that as well um so i was very happy with it i i and then when i of course was able to play it or well i watched it at a yeah premiere that skybound threw for the still not bitten team um oh, cool. it was just it was uh there was so much emotion involved and i think that scene at the end where she's uh you can walk through the hallway maybe oh, it was yeah walking and then all the names of the telltale games you know people who worked yeah. on this game were on the wall i was just oh god <laughs> i'm like yeah. i can imagine yeah. sobbing mess yeah um so that final season on so many levels uh just it felt so good and you know it was the first time that i wasn't like oh well what did ign say or what who gave it what score did it get yeah. or what was i was like i didn't even care uh, the fact that this had just like gotten done yeah. was just like, and I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry, that wasn't like an attack on people who review games. I, of course. No, I know what you mean. I <laughs> was also aware of the accolades or, or you know, reviews that it was getting, but yeah. it was really kind of peaceful to just have this final season be something that was just done. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was the... So you said, you mentioned about the ending. Was it always the same ending before Telltale had their issue? Uh, yeah, I think there were some minor adjustments. Okay. Right. Uh, I mean, nothing that's just like, you know, oh, that would have changed everything. Right. Okay. Uh, they really wanted to honor, uh, you know, the work of, of what the people at Telltale Games yeah. uh, had done. I mean, and honestly, we were... I mean, I, you probably heard this, but I mean, I was literally in the recording studio the day that Telltale was shut down. And we, like, I've not, no. Yeah, so oh, wow. I was recording the final episode in the studio. Oh, uh, wow. They cut the session short and we were all like, what's going on? This is weird. And I called a, a really good friend of mine, yeah. Jason Latino, who was working on The Wolf Among Us. <laughs> And oh. I called him and I was like, hey man, what's going on? Like, what's the deal? And he was like, yeah, we're gone. We're out. They're closing the doors. We have 30 minutes to get our stuff and we're done. Wow. And, <laughs> Jesus. So it was um, very surreal. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> well, I can't. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, I mean. No, I know. I know. Well, you can. I mean, and as a fan of the work and, and that was the experience that came with it as well as, uh, uh this isn't you know this there's just so many people that were attached to this game and attached yeah. to her as a character that it was it was not a selfish like whoa it was me my life you know it was yeah. it was all the people at telltale games it was the fans it was i mean there's just 
just so much behind it. So. Yeah, I can imagine because they are amazing games and there's so much detail. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, last thing on season four, what was your opinion? Did you always know Lily was going to return or was that a surprise to you? Um, that was a surprise, actually. I mean, I knew someone was going to return because they, you know, the writers oh, wow. had kind of told me, I mean, behind the scenes, you know. Yeah. They were like, well, we're going to, you know, so a character is going to return kind of thing. And I was like, ooh. Uh, I wasn't sure if it would be Lily or Krista. Um, because, of course, yeah, who never came back. <laughs> right, she just, but so yeah, yeah, so who knows? Uh, but um, yeah, that was cool. Nikki Rapp is someone again, um, yeah. amazing voice actress, and I've known her since the beginning, since my humble beginning. She's one of the first people I met in this industry. Of and, course, yeah. Um, yeah, I was, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. You know the character. You know what? A, if you're gonna have at least one more baddie, it might as well be Lily. You know. Yeah, the original. <laughs> not, yeah, yeah, she sort of. pissed off a lot of people in season one, so the yeah. fact that they brought her back felt uh, appropriate. Yeah, I liked it because it was really good. Clementine's grown up, and she can finally have her say on what Lily's like. So yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah that was that was fun, and you know, and again, same thing with Gavin. It was just really uh you know it was really cool for nikki to get back into the studio and voice that and, and yeah and i do a lot of you know you know press and interviews and things together so yeah of course yeah. selfishly of course when you're working <laughs> with a good friend <laughs> yeah i get it yeah um so what was your thoughts on um krista like never returning like having an open ending story um well, I don't know, you know, and of course I get a lot of like, is Clem coming back? What's going to happen? Is this is really over? I really don't know. I honestly, from okay. the bottom of my heart, have zero ideas uh, as to whether Skybound uh, will continue her character if they do. I mean, Robert yeah. Kirkman actually said it online at New York Comic Con that oh, really? he alluded to Clem's arc continuing somehow. Oh, wow. I don't wow. know what that means. Hmm. <laughs> Um, it would be if they did continue, of course, selfishly, I would want it to be either another game or an animated series. Cause if you brought her into yeah. the on camera universe, I don't think I'd be able to get away. <laughs> yeah, you're a bit old. <laughs> Not yeah. old, I'm just old, I'm saying old for <laughs> Yeah, Yeah, or just do like, you know, the motion capture kind of like, uh, you know, Andy Serkis doing Gollum or something. Yeah, that'd be cool, yeah. yeah. Um, but now I just totally like went off on a tangent and I can't even remember what your question was. It was about um, Krista. Oh yeah. Um, so uh, I think it would be really interesting. I think she's a, she was a strong character. Like, yeah. I don't know if it's the game universe, maybe at least a DLC or, or yeah. you know, at the end of season four, they did see people on the road. It was like that whole, oh, yeah. we saw people on the road and it's like, well, who is that? Maybe it's her. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Really cool. Uh, and yeah. I don't, I think she was a strong enough positive character that I don't think it would be. I think she'd be someone that Clem would work well with. Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so you worked on Back to the Future as well. So what was it like? Did you ever get to work with Christopher Lloyd? The- no, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> so you didn't get to do any voice uh, work with him? on the game no so unfortunately for the most part in all video games um except for a few recording sessions we work solitary we uh there's just so much content to get through um that it's really difficult to have multiple actors in a studio for that right um and he is celebrity talent so (laughs) you never know (laughs) I know that the the directors and the producers from Telltale who did work with him were super psyched. You know, oh, wow. we all grew up watching Back to the Future and just, yeah. I mean, our own geek out nerd moments. I, you know, yeah. it would have been amazing. And I and I heard he was a lot of fun to work with. But no, I never, never uh, okay. worked with him. I heard Michael J. Fox had a small role in the game as well, didn't he? I think he did, or he start. I, you know, I don't know. Don't quote me on this, but I feel like um, I feel like he was going to do it or started to do it, but I think it was too much. It's in oh, you know, okay. proper recording sessions, or uh, whilst again, I'm grateful and it's amazing. Yeah. You know, after four hours of blah blah blah, you know, talking and yeah, of and course, 
being in your character and it's a lot of it's a lot of energy um yeah, i can imagine so i think in in his physical state i think that was something that he approved i think he was on board with the game obviously yeah. he was totally fine passing that to aj lacasio who did oh, amazing, cool. yeah. amazing sound alike yeah for him. amazing actor cool yeah um so you you reunited with gavin on last of us didn't you for a small scene so what was that like uh well that was cool after i just literally told you that we never work together on video games we actually did work together yeah he told me the other day <laughs> i am full of lies um it, it was it was a very brief but amazing session yeah. um Becky Dodd, who uh, was doing a lot of the casting for those, she did an amazing job of basically pulling together uh, a huge roster of voice actors to, oh, to cool. play these small parts. Yeah. So, I mean, if you look at that, it's like Yuri Lowenthal and Stephanie Shea and, yeah. and me, Gavin. I mean, I've, so many people got to to jump in and, and do these voices. So oh, nice. uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, awesome. And since, you know, the, the Last of Us and The Walking Dead uh, were kind of, you know, of course, yeah. as far as being made and released were kind of neck, neck, neck. Yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah. It, it felt fitting uh, to, to be able to lend voice in that. Awesome. Nice one. Cool. Uh, so what is your favorite Walking Dead season? Oh, um, <laughs> You know, it's, um, it's, ugh, it's, I mean, I always have to, they were so unique. Each one was yeah, so yeah. Uh, different and unique for me that it's, I can't put favorite on it, but um, obviously season one, uh, just, uh, you know, there's, I always screw up this word. There's a lot of anonymous, anonymous. <laughs> All right. Yeah. In voice acting, and uh, and this is not coming from an ego-driven place, but um, you know, I I didn't know that there were. I didn't even know there were game awards. I didn't know you know that voice actors were going to conventions and getting yeah. to meet people and 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 just this game did all of that for for so many of us. And of course, yeah. Uh, the whole just experience of seeing something that you as an actor know is so amazing and then having yeah. it be received by everybody else i mean just it was such a whirlwind experience of watching yeah. something like explode in the most amazing way and um and also you know i won't i won't spoil it but there was a lot of um if you've played season one uh there was uh so much emotion involved and yeah uh, as as an actor to get to go to those places uh, in a video game uh, i can speak for myself and everybody else especially dave benoy it was yeah uh, i can imagine yeah such a unique and um i mean it's just an experience that i mean thankfully <laughs> i got to go on for a few more seasons and go to those those yeah. emotional places but there's just um that first season was just so unique and special on so many levels. So I guess it's not a favorite season, but it was definitely a ride that is yeah. a once in a lifetime kind of thing. Yeah, I totally get that, yeah. Because season one's obviously what got people into the franchise and yours and Lee's connection, in my opinion, is the best in the whole series. So yeah, that's probably my favorite season as well. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, thank you. I mean, I wish I could take credit for all that. The writers, I mean, seriously, the writing on that game uh, and the team of people from the artists to, I mean, just every single human being that worked yeah. on that game. Uh, there was, uh, I, you know, I, I, and this is, I'm not shitting on other game companies. I feel, uh, you know, I, I love everybody I work with. I've never yeah. had experience in voiceover where I leave and I'm like, holy crap, that, those people were horrible. Yeah. Um, but there was something, you know, it, with the people who worked for Telltale that uh, the, a very common sense of humor, a very like, it was just family. Oh, as soon cool. as yeah. you met, you know, it's kind of like, like attracts like. So the yeah, people yeah. who worked there were all just so like-minded and 
just so it was like family you know oh nice cool awesome. um you also worked on the spyro reignited trilogy didn't you as did. uh bianca uh, bianca that's it yeah what was it like yeah. working on that on that because obviously that's one of my all-time favorite games so right um yeah i mean that was a total uh you know getting to honor kind of honor the original uh voice actress yeah you know step into something that was so insanely popular yeah um and and do uh do this role she will she was a lot of fun and obviously it's such a different character from yeah exactly yeah. The world of heaviness and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it was nice to be in in something that was light and fluffy but still had that good energy um yeah, yeah that was really cool i got to work sissy jones i'm totally forgetting the name of the bad queen she oh, did the her, yeah. um so it's again also, yeah yes so again it was also getting to work on a project with someone who i adore oh uh, nice so cool yeah that was a that was a fun game so for that did you have to do it i've not played the game in a while so did you do a different voice or was it, uh, is it, is it your voice it was kind of me but like princessified i can't even really remember it's just oh, okay. it's like a nicer version of me but that was pretty much my voice oh but okay. at the same time though the original i was also trying to they didn't want someone to be a sound alike for the original actress yeah uh yeah. but they wanted to kind of keep it in the same zone okay um, so but yeah that that was not a lot of i mean as far as character works i didn't have to like do any weird tweaking of my voice oh okay yeah much. yeah awesome cool yeah uh, so what has been your favorite role this might be a bit easy what's been your favorite role to play i don't know it might be a bit obvious but i don't know well it is i mean it, you know sure it's a little bit obvious just because again of the experience and yeah. the attachment that i have with clementine um but it doesn't take away um i think being a voice actor anytime you book work anytime if it's commercial if it's a video game if it's animation you're so grateful to be working yeah, of course, uh, yeah. and even if the job is from three lines to seven years yeah. of work on a game um you know there it's just a such a deep appreciation that i get to do what i do for a living that um uh i'm totally dodging your question <laughs> <laughs> no it's fine it's, uh... i mean ultimately yeah there are a lot of characters that i have voiced that have meant a lot to me on a personal level I've, yeah. um, that I've gotten to do sound likes for characters that inspired me and were reasons oh, cool. why I got into voiceover. Um, yeah. So it's just, but I mean, yeah, if you're talking the big picture of, yeah. of crazy life altering events, then for sure, Clem. Okay. So do you feel as though Clementine I must say made you as an actress, but do you think that's what established you as? That, um, yeah, you know, I think about that. I, it just depends on, I mean, there are so many actors, voice actors out there that, you know, um, are working and doing it for a living and, yeah. you know, they may not be guests at conventions or, you know, but they're happily making a living doing yeah. voice acting. Uh, as far as as um, getting to voice, I mean, she's iconic. Of course, she, yeah, yeah. Her name is is was historical on so many levels. Yeah. After that first season came out, it literally, uh, you know, she is now at a level that will be a forever remembered character. Oh yeah, sure. Awesome. In yeah. the history of all characters in yeah the world of gaming and beyond um so yeah as far as like i don't think i i don't want to put the words made my career but yeah. definitely uh i can't think of the words either that i'm looking for um but yeah i mean she definitely elevated me to a place yep. that i again didn't really it's not why I, I you know voice actors don't get into i mean actors in general i shouldn't say that i don't think on camera actors like I'm going to be an actor so that I'm as famous as Brad Pitt like yeah. maybe there might be people with that intention but um but especially in voice acting you're just so psyched to do whatever that you yeah, think I get, yeah. celebrity aspect 
uh, but Clementine definitely did put me in a place that I didn't necessarily visualize. I welcome it. Yeah. I'm super excited and I feel very lucky because I get to interact and meet so many people who, uh, who have helped <laughs> bring me to that place. So, yeah, I saw it together. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So you've, so you've worked on several Telltale games. Is there any others that you went for that you weren't actually part of, like Game of Thrones or Batman? Yeah, no, I was not in Batman. I okay. was not in Game of Thrones. Uh, I did the... Um, Tell uh, Borderlands. I was not in that. Uh, um, I think yes. other than... I think just Minecraft after... Um, yeah, I think it was just the Minecraft and Walking Dead. Was I anything else? Again, sometimes I have to look myself up. <laughs> but no, I was not in Batman or Game of Thrones. I mean, Game of Thrones, they were hiring... Oh, he's I mean, British. Yeah, he was, yeah. A lot of the actors from Game of Thrones yeah. is unfortunately kind of, you know, this isn't being political at all, but I mean, that was a little like, it's like when somebody wins the lottery and they go out and, I don't know, you I know. Mean, I know what you mean, yeah. You gotta, yeah. yeah. It was not cheap to make that game. <laughs> That's why so, there was no season two, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a, a gamble financially. And I, I think that definitely led to a, a lot of the hurt of yeah, why sure. the whole games ended up shutting down. I'm not blaming that completely on Game of Thrones, but you know. Yeah, I know what you was, mean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what has been your arguably biggest accomplishment in your eyes as a voice actor? Um, I, you know, honestly, I think, uh, just the fact that I, I get to do this as a, a career and I, and it yeah. is my sole source, <laughs> <laughs> um, my sole source of, of, uh, of making a living. Yeah. Um, that's a huge accomplishment to me. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a competitive industry and it's easy yeah. to lose your head because it's yeah. not all i'm you know it's not always easy there are times when you're like holy shit like <laughs> oh, things are slow or you know you're not booking as much work or you there's you know self-doubt there's insecurities yeah all kinds of things arise uh when you're basically self-employed yeah i get industry so uh just you know being able to maintain and stay positive and uh and just trust that things will always work out you know it's just yeah. it's been a really cool accomplishment awesome that's one um yeah. so have you got have you got anything in the works at the moment you know i do actually uh, i've been working on a few different games i've done some other stuff as well but of course and you probably get this a lot you can't uh, say anything <laughs> signed an nda yeah uh, <laughs> i'm trying to think of well the last of us i think i did some stuff that's already been released. I did some more work for Ash on League of Legends. Um, oh, cool. That's our, I think I can say. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's out, that's out, I can say that. Um, but yeah, you know, just uh, unfortunately there's stuff. But... Yeah, I get that. <laughs> so any hopes for the future? Like, do you wanna work? You don't, you've not done a lot of movie work, have you? So would you like to do more on-screen work? Um, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't say no to it, but unfortunately, yeah. being a voice actor, you also kind of get a little lazy to it, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I get that. <laughs> it's, not, it's not even the schedule. It's just there's a lot of, like, um, I mean, even to get an acting reel together, I mean, you know, and, uh, yes, I would not say no to on-camera stuff. I love doing on-camera stuff uh, yeah. as far as interviews and, and all the stuff that I've done with Skybound, and, you know, I, I... And I love all yeah. forms of acting, yeah. uh, but it would at this point need to be something where, you know, I'm, someone's like, hey, I want you to be in my movie. And I'd be like, awesome. Yeah, sure. of course, yeah. <laughs> as far <laughs> as the energy that goes into it, I'm, I'm still pretty laser focused on the voiceover aspect, but, uh, but yeah, oh, cool. yeah. I'm to say no. Totally got it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I've recently had an interview with Alex Hernandez and Shelley Shinoy. So what did you ever get to work with them too? Uh, no, uh, no. Shelley's in New York. Alex is in, he's in LA, I believe. Um, no, we didn't work together. I did oh, okay. meet 
I met Shelly um, at uh, PAX in Los Angeles. Oh, cool. um, and we hung out. Uh, she's a lovely human being. Yeah. Um, amazing actress. But no, I, we didn't get to work together in the studio. Uh, oh, okay. I, I did one session with Jeff Shine, who played uh, Javier. During oh, that you only had one scene. What was that? You only recorded once with Javier. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> very brief. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, we don't we don't work together in the studio. It's very rare. So what was so, it like in season one? Did you get to film with Dave a lot? No. Oh no, wow. I didn't, I didn't meet him until episode three. We didn't physically meet until episode three. Oh, what? So did yeah. he know? Did he think you were a kid, by the way, before you met? Or did he know? <laughs> no, he, he knew. Okay. It's funny because one of the writers, actually, Gary Witta, uh, amazingly talented freaking human being, um, yeah. he was, I think it was season or episode three. Yeah. And when, he came in, when I came into the studio, he was just like, holy shit. Like, I did not know that this was voiced by an adult. Wow. Like, oh, it's a huge compliment. Yeah. <laughs> it is good that you can do the kid voice, obviously, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, last question. So what is your dream role? Ooh. If, um, you, if you have one. <laughs> you know, it's hard to say. I mean, there are so many characters, obviously, out there in the world that I'm like, oh, God, it would be so much fun to be this character or that character. You know, honestly, um, to to be on something that's ongoing, like I had with Clementine, you know, yeah. to be able to have a character that um, has like season one, season two, season three, season yeah. four. I mean, I'm sure financially, of course, you know, we're like, yay, that would be awesome because you'd have a solid <laughs> financial foundation. Yeah, of course, yeah. But to just to, to have an ongoing role in like an animated series, um, yeah. And I have had those, but there's only been like two or three seasons and then, you you know, you're done. Oh, okay. Uh, so basically, yeah, if I could just be like Nancy Cartwright, be the next Bart Simpson and like, yeah. voice a character for the next 30 years of my life, yeah. uh, then that would be pretty awesome. So that's, that's pretty dreamy. And of course, you know, as you're going to hear this from all us voiceover people, but to like, you know be in a, you know Pixar and Disney and you know yeah. do all those things which I've been I have worked uh in in with both of those people but um those people you know that guy Pixar <laughs> that chick Disney um yeah. <laughs> but yeah just uh you know to have an animate I'd say probably animation I mean that's why I got into this but to have an ongoing character yeah. I totally get that that's awesome cool yeah. um yeah so I've asked everything I want to so Yay. thank you you're welcome. Thank you for having me. It's been lovely chatting with you. Yeah, it's been great. I appreciate you coming on today. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, maybe. We'll... Sorry, one. Well, I was just gonna say if I can do my best to try to get in touch with Dave. <laughs> yeah, that would be brilliant. I would love that. Yeah, yeah. I uh, maybe you contact him and then, or, if you, or I don't even know if you have his. I'll figure it out. We can chat in the email about that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> so I hope we do this in the future. Hopefully, we do this again sometime. So that'd be awesome. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, uh, especially since you know I have I do have some projects coming up that are pretty cool, awesome. new stuff. So you know, and who knows? Who knows what will happen for Clem? We'll see. Exactly. Let's hope we see Clem in the future, as as with you with the voice, obviously. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's okay. I mean, <laughs> as long as she's okay. But yes, ideally, I will be attached to that as well. Yes, it's yeah. the hoping. Well, yeah, yeah. Thank you again. So. Yeah, you're welcome, Adam. It was nice meeting you. Yeah, so nice you to meet you too. To Manchester for me. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Have a nice. Hopefully, I'll get there at one point. You know. Yes, Again. when all this craziness ends. <laughs> yes. So have a good day and thank you. So. All right. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye.